Out of all the features included in Pippi, one of the ones I've always seen people confused about it is Camlock. It's an incredible feature, but it's not made easy to understand. It's a feature I've used heavily in my Settlers and Lore videos, and the feature brings incredible production value to anything it's used in. So today, let's learn how to use it. Firstly, requirements. The only real prerequisite is to download the Pippi mod, which is available on the Steam Workshop. It's one of the most well-known Conan mods out there, so you've likely already heard of it, and this is all you'll need to access Camlock. Also, I'll take this chance to thank Drakenhal from my Discord, as he explained Camlock to me quite a while ago. I've used it heavily since, so it only seems right to shout out the guy who explained it to me. So, if you aren't familiar, what is Camlock? It's a feature that allows you to disconnect the camera from your character, guiding it along a set path in a sort of dolly camera fashion. As I mentioned earlier, I've used it plenty in my own lore videos and in my Settlers series. It's a great way to both increase the production value and make things more visually interesting. It does have some flaws, but it offers a much smoother and controlled experience than using a controller to record, which I used to do. The aim of this guide will be to teach you how to use Camlock for your own content and to hopefully make this fairly obscure feature of Pippi a bit easier to understand and use without having to take the time to work it out for yourself. So once Pippi is loaded and we're in game, we first need to spawn some cameras. You'll first need to be in admin mode, and then you can go to the building menu in the admin panel and type Camlock, C-A-M-L-O-C, to find the placeable cameras. These cameras are placed in the traditional way through the hotbar. As of September 2022, they can't be used with the construction hammer, and attempting to use the pick piece button will just tell you that you don't know how to craft these items. So firstly, we need to place down some cameras. You should keep in mind a route that you want your cameras to go down. Cameras are placed similar to a lot of other placeables, though they do float, so they don't require solid footing on the ground. They can be tilted and skewed to all sorts of degrees, even to the extreme of being upside down. This is by design to allow you to get more interesting camera angles where necessary, and it is very forgiving. When you're placing down your cameras, try to place them at regular intervals. The distance between cameras does have an influence on how the final product will turn out, so bear that in mind. Also, I touched on it earlier, but it's best to have an idea in mind of what sort of route you want your cameras to take. Once your cameras are placed, you next need to configure them. Find the camera where you want your roll to start and interact with it. This will pop up this dialog you can see now. Channel sort of denotes the category of cameras, if you will. You can leave this on zero if you like, but it can cause some issues. I would recommend setting this to one, and if you only have one camera roll set up at a time, it will work perfectly. Of course, if you have multiple camera rolls set up, you can set them to different channels, so you can flick between different channels to start different rolls, without having to reconfigure every single camera in the line. Index dictates the order in which the cameras will play. Your first camera will always be zero, and the index will rise by one for each subsequent camera. Don't get this order wrong, or you'll end up camera locked, and you'll have to quit the game and rejoin. Transition time denotes the time it takes to move from this camera to the next. This is shown in milliseconds, and will round down to the last zero to match a full second. I usually leave this setting at 5000, though it can be increased or decreased to cover any pacing errors between cameras. Generally speaking though, 5 seconds is fine, unless you want something specific for your camera movement. Once your cameras are placed and configured, you can begin your first shoot. Simply click play in the config panel, and the camera roll will begin. It'll progress from the first to the last camera, and I would always advise running a test shoot when you're learning to make sure the cameras are behaving as they should. Also, make sure you're in first person when you click play, otherwise it won't work and you'll have to stand around in third person and wait until the camera roll finishes. As you've already seen, the camera placeables do go invisible when you hit play, and there used to be a glitch where this wouldn't happen, but I haven't been able to replicate it, so it may have been fixed. Now at this point, I do have a couple of filming tips for you. Firstly, make sure you're invisible, as you don't want to show up in the corner of any of the clips. Secondly, set a keybind for hiding your UI, so you can record without the HUD elements. Finally, use the FOV command to make your camera a little tighter, ensuring you can either capture enough detail in your subjects, or eliminate any distracting elements. Further, it's not always necessary to build an entire stage just for some recording. Much like Hollywood sound stages, it only matters what the camera sees, not what's to the sides. 
Why build an entire fortress just for a throne room shot? Work smart, not hard. Think about what the camera will see and focus only upon that. The rendering of subject matter depends on where your player character stands when starting the role. It does not update as the camera moves. If you're recording a large subject matter or over a large distance, use a starting camera in a central area to transition into the line with things properly rendered. Finally, whilst Camlock is a great tool, sometimes it's not the best. If you just want a simple shot, it can be easier simply just to use the fly mode to achieve that. Camlock is best for more complex shots involving turns and angles, or shots with multiple focal points, and once you learn how to use it, it's a very good tool, but it's very easy to feel like you need to use it all the time, when often you don't. There are a couple of issues you may run into whilst using Camlock, so I'll attempt to remedy them here. Indexing issues can completely break a camera roll, resulting in hard locks and other issues. The best way to avoid this is to make sure your indexes run uninterrupted from 0 until the ending number. If you find yourself getting hard locked, check your cameras to make sure you haven't accidentally missed an index number, and also make sure you haven't accidentally swapped channels mid-roll. If you do find yourself hard locked, you won't be able to get out. You'll be rooted to the spot without being able to move. The way to fix this is to quit out to the main menu and rejoin, or if you get really unlucky and manage to both crash and hard lock at the same time, simply just Alt F4 or use Task Manager to close Conan, and then reopen it to fix the issue. As I mentioned earlier, there is a potential issue with using channel 0. The issue causes the camera to start far away from where it should, pinging forward past where the camera should start, and then rebounding back to join the camera roll at about camera 2. I used to remedy this with a couple of buffer cameras to allow this issue to rectify itself before the segment I intended to record begins. However, I've recently found out that you can avoid this entirely by just not using channel 0, and by instead using channel 1. It requires an extra click per camlock, but it's worth using channel 1 as your default. To recap, camlock is an incredibly useful content creation feature within Pippi. In this guide I've taught you how to spawn, place and configure cameras, alongside provided you with some filming tips and covered some remedies for some of the most common issues reported with Camlock. Thanks for watching, I know Camlock is probably one of the most obfuscated features in Pippi in terms of how it's used, with knowledge of its inner workings pretty much being shared by word of mouth alone, but now hopefully this guide can help others to enjoy this incredibly useful feature as much as I have. If you enjoy my content, all the links to my Twitch, Twitter, Discord, Patreon, Host Havoc affiliate page, NordVPN discount and NordPass discount are available in the description below. However, of course, you can simply just leave a like, a comment or subscribe, any of those are very greatly appreciated. Patrons get a bunch of nice benefits including sneak peeks of videos, your name in every video, custom made wallpapers in 1080p and 4k resolutions, full size build blueprints, discord roles and more. That being said, a massive thanks to all of our esteemed coffee cultists on screen now for continuing to support the channel over on Patreon. Again, thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you soon.